love handles have a cute name and a bad reputation. They have been designed by evolution to serve as an energy supply to be used when food is scarce or when extra energy is required. For thousands of years, our starving ancestors considered them as an alluring, almost unattainable mark of freedom from hunger. But today's society is vehemently against fat, and we know that weighing too much puts our health at risk. But let's look at fat from another angle. Without it, we simply would not exist. From a scientific point of view, what we call fat corresponds to a variety of molecules named lipids. In Luzon, Gizu van der Goot is leading a project funded by SystemsX.ch, which aims to gain a better understanding of the large part of us that is made up by lipids. Although lipids tend to be identified with that surplus weight that we'd rather not have, they are actually everywhere in our bodies. Indeed, each of our cells is like a little bag and the wall of this little bag is formed of, of lipids. But in order to communicate between the inside and the outside of the cells, in this lipid layer there are proteins uh, that allow messages or signals to get in. And then inside the cell there are also chambers and these chambers are again uh, surrounded by lipids. The biggest of these chambers is the nucleus. This is where our DNA is. And there are also all kinds of other little chambers and one of them, for example, contains the fat. All our cells have fat, some very little, and others that we call fat cells have a huge amount of lipids and they contain in particular cholesterol and triglycerides. Cholesterol, one of the most fundamental molecules in living organisms. Adults have about 150 grams of cholesterol on average. That's more or less the weight of this soap, and almost all of it is necessary. Cholesterol forms part of the covering of nerve cells that allows them to transmit signals. Our body needs it to produce vitamin D and avoid diseases such as rickets. And it is the basic ingredient for many hormones, including sex hormones. So indeed, cholesterol is a very important molecule and therefore cells have two ways to get it. One is to get it from the diet and the other one is to make it themselves. So it's a very complex molecule, so there are 20 steps to make it. We know what these 20 steps are. What we don't know is how cells determine whether they take it from the diet or whether they make it themselves and how fast they make it. And also we don't know how cells completely get rid of it when they have too much. Lipids exhibit complex molecular behavior and interactions with other components of the organism. So lipids in a membrane behave as a community. They influence each other, they move in a synchronized way, and then they influence the proteins that are inside of this membrane. And vice versa, the proteins will influence the lipids, and also the inside and the outside will influence the lipids. To understand which genes control the variability of different kinds of lipids and how this variability changes according to the needs of the cell, scientists are switching off each one of the roughly 25,000 genes one by one in order to study the effect on each of the roughly 1,000 lipids that are in our cells. This means taking 25 million measurements. To analyze all these results, we have to use mathematics and high computational power. And this is typically the kind of approach that has been prone by Systems X. The kind of studies carried out by Gizu van der Goot and her collaborators are of fundamental importance to understanding not only how our bodies work and stay healthy, but also to understanding what happens when something goes wrong. If this happens, it can lead to metabolic diseases, such as diabetes and obesity, that at present are among the most common diseases in the world. <laughs>